Here's my five day retaining wall project to get ready for installing artificial turf. Here's how we did it. We got the house from the previous owners, everything was black mulch for presentation. It looked great for a minute, but the black mulch quickly got messy and the weeds just pushed their way through, not to mention it wasn't really usable for any livable purpose, so we knew we wanted to install turf. We live on a hill, so our yard is sloped slightly, which means it's naturally great for drainage, but in order to prepare a relatively flat surface for the turf, we needed to install the perimeter retaining wall area for the higher part of the garden. We'd never really done anything like this before, so we went with the easiest design possible, which was to install posts, then side planks, and then finish it with a piece of wood on top. The first thing we did was remove everything from the yard, and then we started digging out the area that the retaining wall would go. The prep was a lot of work because we have clay soil, so we did our first of many runs to the hardware store to buy this pickaxe to be able to dig out the clay, and we just hacked at it for hours. We also made holes 12 inches deep to prep for the retaining wall posts that we would put in. Okay, this is day two, which is more like day four because it rained for three days. So we are back in the garden. We're gonna put some posts in today. We're gonna anchor the posts and then maybe pour some concrete today. Every time I take on a new project, I like to get a new tool. I actually asked for this specific chop saw for Christmas from my dad. So lucky me, I got to get good use out of it for this project and I've been using it for so many projects since. Okay, we cut some of the wood posts, but it started to rain, so day one was like an hour of work. So we came back the next day and set up the posts. The prep on this was by far the most complex part of the project. We did a lot of math to figure out the spacing of the posts. We did a max distance of eight feet apart on the posts because that's the length of the standard boards you can get. I read a lot of information that posts should be closer together, but because our wall is really short and there is already an existing concrete wall on the perimeter of the property line, I felt okay pushing it to the limit and it's been totally fine. So back to the calculations. We had to calculate distance between the posts and then for depth, there's some differing guidance online. For example, some recommended that the depth below ground be as deep as the post will be high above ground. Our wall is pretty short and we basically went about 12 inches all around, even for the parts of the wall that are higher than that. And because we designed the wall to be tiered as it went towards the corner, we had to take that into account when placing the posts too. You need a way to stabilize the posts when the concrete is being poured, so we screwed pieces of wood to the posts and anchored them by screwing to the fence to keep everything in the exact spot that we wanted. Now it was time to pour the concrete. We used the standard concrete mix and poured it about six inches high for each post. You want to mound the concrete with the highest part of the concrete up against the post so that the water flows away from the post when it rains and doesn't just sit on the wood. Okay. Day three, we're about midway through. We just poured all the concrete, if you can see. So we didn't follow the instructions quite perfectly. One thing we didn't do that demonstrates that we're amateurs is that it's best practice to pour the concrete so that there is concrete below the post. And here comes our next mistake regarding the posts. So we had one issue with one of our posts. So this one, it was at the end and it just had no stability because it wasn't supported on all sides. So we did redo this one. We brought the pole about two inches out off the wall. Now hopefully it'll have more support. Actually it does, because we did this yesterday and it doesn't move. Bring this off and I can shake this and it's staying put. So I learned a little bit that one. Make sure you have cement on all sides. And that this time we did it properly because we uh, put cement, uh, the concrete mix on the bottom first. So there you go. At least one of our posts was done correctly with the concrete on the bottom. And now we can just unscrew all of the supporting pieces of wood. For the horizontal planks, we tried to keep it as simple as possible. We got four inch and eight inch standard boards and used them in combination to create the wall. Here we did the eight inch on top and then a four inch on the bottom. We constantly used a level and we just made the planks the distance between the posts. One challenging thing was pre-calculating the height of the posts as the tiers went up and doing so in a way that matched the boards that we had. Apparently one amateur mistake we made here was not putting any spacing between the boards for drainage. We just sat the boards right up against each other, which makes it hard for water to escape out. 
Some people also put a drainage system behind the retaining wall with a tube to carry water to a certain place away from the wall. Again, not something we did. And here I miscalculated the pole distance. So we had a board that didn't go all the way to the end of the post, which is a problem because this end of the post would be exposed. So we just added this small piece of wood. The top won't be seen because we put a flat piece on top later. I think this was a slightly dangerous way to screw this in place. Oh wow, this cracked. Oh, oh. All right, so it cracked where the screw is. So, well, this is really purely for aesthetic reasons. <laughs> and then this last post I cut on the fly. I only had this skill saw that didn't reach the four inch depth of the post. So I had to cut both sides separately and kind of missed. So I had to finesse it a little bit. This is what happens when you're lazy and you don't measure everything in advance. You end up with dozens of off cuts. <laughs> that could have been used if we had connected them. So once we got all of the standard horizontal planks in place, it was time to finish off the bottoms of the wall, which was the trickiest part because of the slope of the land. This is the only part, this corner, where we have to do custom cuts. So we're gonna do a graded custom cut here, six inches to one and a half. And we'll see, hopefully it doesn't split. Hopefully that one and a half inch side is, uh, you know, strong enough. The other side will be just a straight two inch across board, but we don't have two inch planks, so we have to make one with uh, one of our eight inch ones. I went to the hardware store to get this cheap straight edge so that I could rip these boards down to the shape and size I needed. It's a terrible straight edge because it's not very sturdy. The title of this video should be Why Going Cheap Makes Everything So Much Worse. The problem with this cheap straight edge is that it came with the smallest clamps ever. So I actually have to go and get new clamps. One hour later, got the clamps. And I lost the footage of the cut actually being made. Anyway, getting the ripped board in place was a breeze. The hardest part was getting my hand back there with enough space to get the drill in. So I'd really recommend trying to leave as much space as possible between your wall and the soil to make it easier to work. Okay, stepping back and admiring the wall that we just completed. This part is going to annoy me because of the corner. So it turns out my nervousness about the bottoms of all the boards not looking perfectly done and having perfect lines that met up and were tight to the soil was unfounded because when we eventually installed the turf, as you can see, all of that stuff disappeared. So take into consideration what is going in front of your wall because maybe you have very little to worry about when it comes to how perfect you need to make it. We decided to install tops to only parts of the wall, basically just places that were tall enough where we thought people might want to sit. Now I'm getting to this corner and I need to miter the edge. The complicating thing is that it's honestly not a uh, perfect square. So I'm going to have to miter to a non-perfect square edge. So at the very end, to stabilize the top pieces for sitting, we installed these L brackets with washers and screws to make it a little bit more sturdy. And that's it. Oh, by the way, I didn't really care to film this because it's a less showy project, but in the other corner of the yard, we installed a wood perimeter to create a little vegetable patch using the same techniques as the retaining wall with posts arranged at each intersection and a single wood panel connecting each plank. The bubbly definitely made it more enjoyable. Mayo is painting so that the curtains match the drapes. <laughs> no, so that the so that the fence matches the retaining wall. We're gonna do some gardening today. I gotta start digging up our floor because uh, we're gonna put the grass on top and it needs to, we need to get a little depth in there. Uh, we finished uh, painting the retaining wall. Mayo painted it. It looks good, but pro tip, don't paint your fence with the Benjamin Moore paint color and then ask Home Depot to match it because they can't, even though they say they can. So 
Good to know. After painting, we just did a bunch of prep work to take on our next project, which was to install the artificial turf. I have a whole separate video on the turf installation, which I'll link to at the end of this video. We installed bender board to set up the rest of the perimeter where the turf would go, and we filled in all the beds with soil and started doing some planting. Miles planting some bulbs that we got at Costco for $17.99 for those, right? Yeah. These were $3.97 each. Four peonies, six calla lilies. So we're just testing them out. All the flower bulbs we got from Costco died and never made it, but we've been able to get a lot of other things to grow. Most of the other stuff that we planted, we have scavenged for free or picked up from friends or family. So it's not the most uniform looking garden, but it's been pretty economical. So thanks for following along. My biggest regret on the entire project was that we didn't invest into better materials, including the wood. We used pine wood from the big box hardware store. So we could have used harder wood. We could have used pressure treated wood. We could have even put a moisture barrier between the wood and the soil. And we didn't do any of that. So I'm not sure how long this is going to last. It has been three years since we originally installed it and it's actually held up better than I thought. There is some cracking in some places, but otherwise it looks pretty good and the wood actually still looks pretty decent. If we ever did need to replace it, the biggest complicating factor is that our artificial turf is cut exactly to match the wall. So we would have to probably bring the wall out further and cut out some of the turf to make it match again. But overall, I'm really satisfied with the result. It's the most complicated project I've ever taken on in my life. So it gives me confidence for future projects. So thanks for following along and I'll see you for the next one. Oh, Wally, stop eating the plants.